Hi everyone, so I'm, my name is Tiffany Lowe. I am studying computer science and graphic design. My advisor who has helped me complete this project is a fantastic Laura Gray, who is sitting up front here. She's fantastic. <laughs> and so this is my starting point. I wanted, oh, <laughs> when I started thinking about what I want to do for, pro for my project, I knew that I wanted to work with data just because it's always really interesting to me and I think data analysis and data visualization very perfectly melds the two worlds that I'm in where I'm doing a lot of programming and I'm also doing a lot of designing. Big data seemed to be naturally the fit for what I should go for. It's a buzzy word. It's interesting. And uh, so far before that I had worked on something with like 30,000 records which is a moderate size but it was a fairly interesting and thorough process, so I thought, okay, how can I, what hard-hitting question can I answer with a huge data set to impress everybody? Bad way to go, because it was just a lot of pressure. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to look at, and meandered a little bit. I stumbled upon looking at healthcare as a result. Um, over the summer, when I was home, I got in contact with some people at the Department of Health. Uh, in the division where they had a lot of faxes going around and spreadsheets that they just never looked at. So it seemed like a very good challenge to try help them streamline it, help them organize and analyze what they're doing in order to work better. It's like meaningful work. Decided this isn't gonna work either. I spent a semester working with them, trying to understand what they're doing and like what all the different codes in their Excel spreadsheets mean, but it was just way too much overhead for someone to do this project in like six months. The focus I got out of that was that I wanted to work on something that meant something to people, that I could deliver to people and share and sort of like captivate them using the skills that I had. Um, I, as a result, this is a more light-hearted approach to my data set and it allowed me to just think about how I wanted to create my process and structure the project and not so much what meaningful discoveries I will make for the benefit of the world. Uh, this is really vague, so still not the final topic. I looked at Facebook likes as a result to try to find data that characterizes people and their identity and what um, makes us interesting. Facebook likes, very tempting data set. However, it's too personal. Also, Facebook likes had a really wide range of subjects, so it would be very difficult to like analyze and make anything meaningful out of looking at like your favorite food, your favorite memes, your favorite artists, so forth. Lastly, I landed on a narrowed scope of what people like, looking at music. I think music has gotten incredibly personal over these past two, three decades, where you, you, know, you had your Walkman, where you could listen to at least the CDs you wanted, then you had an MP3 player where you chose the songs that you wanted. You didn't get restricted to an album. Then now you have Spotify and streaming where you could listen to basically any song you want, whenever you want, and you really tailor your musical experience. Uh, personally, I've gotten dragged into the quantified self movement as a result of my own music data that I've been tracking since 2009 of like basically every song that I've listened to since then up until this day. And it's incredible, it's so interesting to see how I've grown and like sort of reflected the, the stages that I was in in my life based on music. Uh, current musical data landscape, you have sort of formal sources of data such as like billboard charts, or um, the Recording Association of America, they have certifications and never keep records as well. Your iTunes library tracks what you're listening to. Last.fm, which is a web app, also tracks, helps people track what they're listening to. All of these sources have issues of like maybe access, such as you paying for a database, inconsistent data. Artists are, you know, like may have symbols in their name that are like encoded differently. Titles with expletives may be encoded with the expletive, maybe with a lot of asterisks and so forth, and all of them geared towards analyzing everyone on a very macro scale, and just answer like what and who listens to music, but not so much digging into the why and the relationship people have with their music. And so here I am uh, looking at data visualization, studying and reading a lot of books about sort of the theory behind it since I guess there's a lot of it that's intuitive as a result of knowing information design, but there's still a lot to think about um, like psych psychology concepts like gestalt laws and other ways of how people look at information but also looking from the scientific point of view like what is the range of visualizations that people have used out there 
to uh, visualize information. Of all that, I found what resonated with me and also what seems to be a trend is that first you need to start with sound data. Then there generally needs to just be a train of thoughtfulness into what you're making. Like You need to look at a data visualization and see that someone decided to really parse through this and bring a lot of things together. There's complexity, there's interest, and then there's also clarity, though, despite the fact that things are complex. Uh, elements of storytelling and sort of bringing something that's relevant and relatable to people also seems to be a good trend to bring into sort of more, um, less like scientific and more sort of like entertaining data visualizations. Um, during part of this process, I decided my data, oh gosh, <laughs> my data doesn't have to be big to be interesting. I, again, I started thinking really big and decided making the scope smaller allows me to put the attention that I want to looking at, at what I'm doing. Um, the quantified self movement, which is people just collecting data about their own lives, such as this example of designer Nicholas Felton visualizing all the people that he has he has relationships with and like conversations they have with them on the telephone or like through mail and so forth. Um, taking a snapshot of someone's personal data, which is incredibly micro scale, is actually really interesting to like meet someone via graphs and just like track records about them. So this whole process makes data human. It makes it personable instead of being just a bunch of cold, unapproachable numbers sometimes. And from a design standpoint, I, take, I think of visualizations in this camp where you have visualizations that are very cool and very captivating in terms of their like technical impressiveness, but I wouldn't want to look and understand what this means. Versus this is from um, The Happy Show. It's an installation. Uh, where gumballs become a bar graph. Like, that's so fun, and that makes you want to look at it and like think about what it means. In my process, I looked at what other data visualization designers have done, and this is a methodology that Ben Fry, who is a pretty expert <laughs> person in this field and also um, just a pretty knowledgeable dude, has come up with. So first, just acquiring the data, parsing the data, filtering to what you need to answer the questions you want, mining it for the conclusions that you hope to find, and then this whole visualization portion where you're representing the data just to see what it looks like, then refining it and making it more interesting. So my collection process came in the form of this type form. It's pretty sh simple. I just asked people for some simple demographics. And also, what are their listening habits? How many hours or how many weeks do you, uh, how many days do you spend listening to music in a week? Uh, I look at music consumption based on artists because I think it narrows down music in general in a very succinct way. Um, so I ask people who are their top 10 artists and then what makes that artist resonate with them and how music may connect with their identity and perception. I also accompanied this with data from <coughs> Spotify, so just to get to know the artists better and be able to like sort and categorize them based on some sort of metric, but then again, Spotify is just sorting it by their own standards. <laughs> iTunes would have different things to say about all the artists. I took all the data, looked at it in Excel, just to get a feel of what's happening, saw someone troll me and put Eminem 10 times. <laughs> I was like, why is Eminem so popular? Then I used Python to just like do a little more aggregation and work uh, with the data. Oh, and then I also did some work and put it into a database so that, again, I could just flesh out what I'm doing, look at correlations, try to figure out what's happening within this data set. I also had to clean the data set, so I found a lot of interesting spellings of things. Someone who decided to specify they liked old Kanye. <laughs> but as Kanye noted, and I love Kanye, you just take Kanye as he is, all forms of Kanye. <laughs> so, the visualization component was which is a lot of sketching and then refining it, tweaking it to modify it to what I want. Um, one visualization that I couldn't quite work out yet was just um, how to group what people had said resonated about the artist. So I just took the top 10 artists that like, listed general themes that I had found, such as, like, oh, there's a lot of love for strong women, strong independent women, um, emotional songs that like, speak to like, your relationships. And authenticity was also a very interesting point that people had made about a number of these artists. I and mean, they're also really mainstream artists, so there's that. <laughs> and so this is a sketch where I just 
um, this is using a library in Python just to output the graph, and then taking what I see from here. Uh, I took it into Illustrator and made it pretty, and also decided to just look at um, the male and female skew, just like as percentage, as proportions of the total um, counts that the artist got. So Kanye West and Kendrick Lamar actually have a male skew for when my survey was very female skew. This is interesting. Drake as a rapper, I guess, has more female fans. More sensitive, less angry. <laughs> uh, perception and identity. I use a heat map because a scatter plot seemed to be just like a little too much to look at. And this is a very succinct way to see that people who feel strongly about their identity, ty being tied to music, feel strongly about the perception of others tied to music. Uh, this is a fun graph. <laughs> I took all the artists and then connected them based on whether or not they're listed on Spotify as related artists. Um, and the, the size of the blobs is based on how many times they were mentioned on the survey. And you also have genres. So usually they're clustered basically by genres because people in the same genre have um, relation or related artists <laughs> on Spotify. And it's interesting to see that there's this whole little rock cycle, like here, they're just clustered <coughs> on their own. The Beatles is 60s, and so I guess they're not associated with everyone in the 70s and 80s, because these are a lot of the um, like Led Zeppelin and such bands, and then they're not really related to like current pop music. <laughs> um, alternative and pop seems to have strong links, and then this interesting link of rap and R&B to pop is surprisingly just Rihanna and Kanye West. <laughs> um, but, like I think what in terms of like recording the survey, other than this is just fascinating about artists and music. <laughs> um, you can see that like a lot of the more popular artists are within pop, obviously, and then um, there's like a pretty good sector of people who enjoy rap and R and B as well. Oh, this is just an in progress shot. There's just a lot of designing happening. And I distilled everything that I learned into a book, which is right here. I'm just like flipping through. Um, it's like 82 pages, just explaining the basics of visualization, then some nuances of how to approach visualizations, quantified self, and then this sort of case study that I made using music data that I collected from people. Um, yeah. and all this has been made possible thanks to my fantastic advisor who has listened to me ramble about every iteration of this project and also a lot of friends who have listened to me complain and people who have replied to the survey because I'm assuming there are some of you here, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions? Professor Kaleo is not here. I'm going to ask you where the Rolling Stones are in the chart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, oh, I didn't mention. So in this graph, it's like the top 75 artists, which actually like beautifully um, became every artist that had at least like, I think four people mentioned them. <laughs> My survey size was like 100. So I got, very, like I had 600 artists from 100 people. And so there was a, the overlap. I think they're here. I think they're somehow in this like little cluster of rock. Artists, because these are more the more contemporary rock artists. Yeah, I should probably label this, but figuring out how to label seventy-five dots is an issue. <laughs> yep. So the lines connecting each of these dots just has to do with whether Spotify clarifies them as very classic. Yes, and so it's a little subjective because Spotify does not like update all that information, or you have people like Taylor Swift who does not have her music on Spotify anymore, and so they just I think decided not to ever update her information, so she's attached to a lot of country artists instead. Yeah. It would be cool if you could connect the dots according to like if people listen to a bunch of those different artists, and then you can see like how people's taste varies across mm -hmm. the different kinds of categories. Yeah, I'm hoping to do that. It's the issue again is like my sample size and the very dispersed data <laughs> makes made it really hard to sort of like draw interesting connections based on maybe like one person making a connection between two artists. Huh? Is that time? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Time's up. Yeah, but thank you everyone for listening to the oh,